A few years ago, The Telegraph broke a story that Virgin Media were using ferrets as cable layers to run internet cables to rural areas. An armada of ferrets, one person described it as. The question arose, is the internet vegan? It turns out that ferrets have been used throughout history for tasks involving hard to reach places. More recently, laying the wires down in aeroplanes, cleaning particle accelerators, and even laying the TV cables for Princess Diana and Prince Charles's wedding. On a side note, ferrets are one of few animals that actively sneeze on one another regularly, and so they're often used in testing the transmission of flu strains. So, is it vegan to get the flu? Or to fly? Or to benefit from the scientific advances of particle accelerators? Or is the British monarchy vegan anymore? Probably, because I've really bent the definition of veganism a lot. It's about animal products in things that you eat. And no one has ever eaten an entire aeroplane before, except for Michael Letito, who has eaten an entire aeroplane. That and the Virgin Media ferrets were actually a hoax. Albeit a very convincing one, what with all the cable laying using ferrets that goes on in the world. But the internet, for now at least, remains vegan. Not vegan myself, though I'm generally pretty pescatarian at home. I'm supportive of the ideals. The prevention of cruelty to animals becomes ever more important as the global population spirals upwards and industries increasingly cut corners to meet demands. Only a few years ago there were angora rabbits plucked naked for their fur on an industrial scale just to get a few more strands of cashmere wool, regardless of the agony for the rabbits. The world really came together on this and brought about change. I think everyone agrees that these kinds of injustices need to be fought against, but sometimes the fight for justice gets a bit disoriented. For example, the UK recently introduced a new £5 note containing tallow, which is a product made from beef fat, and there was a massive uproar. But why? People weren't going around killing cows to keep the £5 printing presses rolling. No cows suffered for the purpose of making those £5 notes. In fact, all of the tallow combined for all of the £5 notes that have been made so far totals up to less than half of a cow. And all of that tallow was just waste product from the meat industry. Meat industry waste products are everywhere. There are shrimp shells in hairspray. There is bone marrow in toothpaste. There's even pig skin in gelatin sweets. And that smell of crayons that you remember from childhood, deliciously, that is stearic acid from processed beef fat. But none of these products are problems in themselves. They don't need to contain animal products. They just do so because they're cheap. And if they weren't used, then they just end up in landfill. The root of the problem is the meat industry. Delicious as meat is, is a horribly inefficient way of getting protein. At the moment, one third of the world's arable land is used for rearing cattle. And of all the land that has been cleared in the Amazon rainforest, 70% of it is used as cattle pasture and most of the rest of it is used for generating food for those cattle. Meanwhile, in the USA, animals are responsible for 55% of all soil erosion, 37% of all pesticide use, and 50% of all antibiotics used, including humans. And don't forget that measles, tuberculosis, and smallpox all came from cows. Many of the world's worst plagues come from pathogens jumping the species gap from domesticated animals to humans. The more domesticated animals, the more plagues. Even if you take into account the fact that plants have a lower protein density than animals, if you use the same area of land to farm cows as you do for soy, you'll get 10 times more protein out of the soy land. Now I know what you're thinking. Shouldn't we all be eating insects instead? And you're exactly right. Insects are crammed full of protein, low in fat, actively happy to be raised in close quarters and produce 80 times less methane than cows for the same amount of protein. Remember that methane is 25 times more potent a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, which means it'd arguably be better if all cows' anuses were fitted with spark plugs to ignite the methane as it came out. When it comes to the usage of precious, delicious water, you need 2,000 litres to make just 150 grams of beef. 150 grams of protein from insects can be gained with just half a litre. Eating insects is way more normal than you might think. About two billion people eat insects on purpose every single day. And I say on purpose because insects are everywhere and they're always like sneaking into food. So for example, a hundred gram bar of chocolate 
is officially limited by the FDA to only 90 pieces of insect before it breaks the rules. It's just so hard to keep pieces of insect out of something like chocolate. Would you like flies on your soup, sir? I hope so. There will be magic. Before you head out and start ravaging the lands, catching and eating every single insect in sight, remember that a lot of wild insects might contain pesticides from nearby farms. Better to eat properly farmed insects for food. Also, to be fair, it's maybe not even that bad to farm insects. It's not like insects aren't in on the farming game as well. There are two species on the planet that do farming, humans and ants. Ants farm all manner of things, from fungus gardens that they use to break down little bits of leaf, through to mealybugs which they herd around and use to help them extract sap from plants. Just like shepherds moving their flocks into shelters when the weather is bad, ants herd their little mealybugs underneath leaves so that when it rains they can be sheltered. It's time to start powering ourselves with insects, just like this little steamboat powered with beeswax. This has been Science of the Bath. Spread the knowledge and deliciously subscribe for more.